If you have been following along in my card making challenge and series of card making tutorials I've been doing, you have seen me do this before where I find a template for a type of card online and then turn it into something we can cut with our Cricut. So for this easel card, I first need a, a square piece that is four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Then I'm going to duplicate that because the rectangle piece I need is four and a quarter this way and eight and a half this way. So I can unlock that and change the width to eight and a half. There we go. I'm going to lock that back together. So now I have to insert the score lines. I'm going to go to my shapes, grab a score line, and make it four and a quarter. And actually, I am going to need two of those. So I'm going to duplicate that, put those right on top of each other using a line. Perfect. Now I can take this and say, align all of that to the top and the left. And now those score lines are right there, exactly on the edge. Now I can select everything and I'm going to tell it to make the position two and two. I'm doing this because I'm going to use the grids to help me dictate where the score line goes. And actually I'm going to change it to two and three. So now I know that the X position is lined up on this two and the Y position is lined up on the three. So if I want this score line moved in four and a quarter inches. I would add that onto the two that's already here to be six and a quarter. So now that score line is exactly where I want it. Do that again with the next score line. And I found these measurements and score line placements by just searching easel card template online. All right, so that is my basic easel card. I want to select all of this and say attach. That will hold the placement and position of those score lines. So when I fold this card, this score line is going to fold this way. And then this score line will fold up so that there's kind of a peak here. That is what this piece will sit on top of. It's going to be a lot easier to show you when I'm actually making it. This is really just the base of what I need for my card, but now I want to kind of embellish it. So I'm going to add an offset, but I'm going to go to the inside of the card, so it's technically an inset. and I'm going to do it with a harsh corner and hit apply. And I'm going to change that to white. Now I can duplicate that and use that exact same piece here. Because you will see part of this when this piece is standing up like an easel. Also, we're going to want something in here probably with a sentiment on it that is built up with some foam tape to to kind of make the easel stand. So I am going to just insert a rectangle. <laughs> I'm going to do a large star that's got two layers on it. I'm actually, 
I can maybe change the colors of these. Maybe I'll see if I can find some metallic um, vinyl to use for these. That could be fun too. All right, and then I'm going to use some text and just type up happy birthday. And I am going to click on my font here and make sure I am using my fonts. Nothing worse than picking out a font you want to use and then finding out you don't own it so you have to pick a different font. <laughs> so there's my card and the next step is to cut all these pieces and assemble it all together. Now we're going to do something fun. I'm using iron on vinyl on this piece of cardstock. So I'm just place it in my heat press and then I'm going to place a piece of parchment paper over the top and I'm actually press it with my heat press. I went 360 degrees for about 20-25 seconds. You can then open it up, check it. If it didn't stick, hit it again with another shot of the heat press. This is a great way to use up scraps of iron-on vinyl or maybe some fun holographic vinyl that you can't find holographic cardstock. Be careful, it is hot when you're peeling that off. but. Once I let it cool for a couple seconds, you'll be able to see how perfectly this press. I'm actually going to press holographic vinyl over the top. So put my parchment paper down and press again. Now, because I was going to do two layers, I really should have shortened my press time so that I didn't overheat one layer. You're going to see the solid color orange looks a little melted um, but it's for a card and actually it kind of adds a nice little effect for the situation I'm using it for. Now it's time to take all those pieces and assemble them. I like to use a double sticky tape runner to just run some tape across the back of my pieces and then I can just apply them on top of the other cut pieces to stack them up and layer them really quickly and easily. And now I'm going to take this pattern paper which is going to be on the inside front which sticks in place and once we make this an easel, you will see part of this and that's why I wanted to use a patterned paper instead of a solid color. So now I'm folding it so it's kind of easel shaped. You can see how that card piece is going to stick on the front. So I'm just going to apply some more adhesive to this front flap. little bit was hanging over so I just kind of roll that back with my thumb and now I can place the card front on top of that. So this is how the card would be when you send it or give it and then they can stand it up like an easel. And right now it is standing up okay on its own but just to ensure it stays like this, I am using a piece of foam tape that has some thickness to it on the back side of my sentiment piece. And then I'll place that on the front piece. So then there's like a little ledge to stop that from folding close so it stands up like an easel. And now you can see on the angle how it looks like an easel. So you can close it down to put it in an envelope or give it 
and then stand it up for the easel for a display. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I love to hear from you.